few years back, I was driving in Florida with my family. We were in an uh, RV, and we were driving uh, late at night, and the kids were all settled down, and something happened with the temperature uh, outside and inside to where my windshield started to fog up. And I don't know if you're like me, I always get confused whether I should put it on heat or cold or how to get it just right. I know you're perfect in it, but I, I struggle figuring out exactly what to do to make the windshield do what I need it to do. And sometimes it has a mind of its own and it just, it's, it's hard to tell. So within a span of like 20 seconds, the whole windshield started to fog up. And uh, so I turned my windshield wipers on. Sometimes you can solve the problem with the, when the, with the windshield wipers. And so I put the windshield wipers on and it, and it started to help, but then I realized we had a much bigger problem. We had something going on on the inside and, and the whole windshield was fogging up. So I started to slow down and brothers and sisters, I'm telling you within 30 seconds, I was in a crisis. The whole windshield was fogged up. I couldn't wipe it off. I couldn't squirt it off. I couldn't do, I, I couldn't do anything. I had, so I slowed down to like 10 miles an hour trying to figure this out. I came to the point where I almost stopped on the interstate. It was that bad, worst I ever remember. And I remember praying to the Lord, Father, help me figure this out. And I really don't know how it worked out, but something worked out where it started to clear up and I didn't die and we didn't all die and I'm here today. Somebody say, thank God for vision. Because without vision, the people perish. And we don't just exist to sit around the fire and sing Kumbaya. Thank God for those moments where we enjoy each other's fellowship. But there is a great commission. There is a, a mission that Jesus said, go into all the world. And we're not to just sit around and enjoy one another's fellowship, although that's a beautiful part of what we do. There is a vision. There is a thrust in, in front of us. And so as a local church, we take very seriously the vision that's in front of us. What are we doing? Where are we going? This is something that Bethany, uh, we have an elders group that prays and, and talks about what vision is in front of us, carefully prays. As a matter of fact, we have an elders meeting tomorrow, but we pray and we gather. We also have phenomenal campus pastors and associates, uh, trustees board, and all of these vision items go before them. And today, I, I just want to communicate some of what's in front of us. And, and I pray that the Lord just resonates with your heart, what's in front of us as a local church, and, and that you're excited about it. So I'm going to call this sermon today, Build Your Church. Build your church. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. Okay, build your church. And you're going to hear this phrase a lot over the next three years because today we're beginning something called Build Your Church. It's gonna be fantastic, but I'm just gonna to speak to you for a few moments on Build Your Church. I wanna read a scripture from Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And this is Jesus talking to Peter, a very famous passage of scripture. Peter had just declared that Jesus was the son of God. And Jesus says, now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Question, what is Jesus building? If you just took, looked at this scripture and answered the question, what is Jesus building? He's building his church. What is he building right now throughout the globe? His church. And there are some who would want to deconstruct it pull it down, say it's not valuable, say we don't need it, we don't, but Jesus is building his church. And it says, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. A powerful truth to know is no matter what people say, no matter what people do, and, and sometimes we have the temptation to feel sorry for the church or feel bad, oh God, uh, but the gates of hell will not, will never prevail against the church. He is building his church. He is building his church. So here is a, a question for you. What are you building? It's a great question. If Jesus is building his church, what are you passionate about building? And you know, we all are given decades to live. 
most under 10 decades to live. We can all put our hands to building something. Put our hands to building a business, put our hands to building a brand, put our hands to building a life, a family. We're all building something. All of you in your minds right now, you're thinking about what you're building. You're building some sort of a portfolio. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, you're building something. And I would just challenge you this morning to align what you're building with what Jesus is building because what he is building is his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The first reason why we're building the church is because Jesus is building the church. We are passionate about what he's passionate about. Brothers and sisters, I know we all give our lives to different things. I have given my life to the building of his church. That's what I care about. That's what I've surrendered my entire breath and days to is building his church because Jesus is building his church. Another reason why we're building the church is because when the church is mobilized, it is the hope of the world. The church mobilizes the hope of the world. The government is not the hope of the world. It's truly not. And we love, I mean, America's an incredible country. And I do think that America's at the top of countries in the world. But governments cannot be the hope of the world. I believe that Jesus is the hope of the world and his plan and his body on earth is the church. We mobilized are the hope of the world. You say, what is the hope for Louisiana? What is the hope for our cities? What is the hope for our state? The hope is the local church. I believe that when we live up and to the full measure of what Christ intends us to be, we are the hope of the world. That's why we're building the church. And we can sit on the outside of culture and say, oh gosh, I just, I can't stand to see what I see. I, I, it's driving me crazy. We are the hope of the world. You and I are. Another reason why we're building the church is because the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. It says in 1 Timothy 3 verse 15 that we are the pillar and foundation of truth. That means that the world believes and is drifting in all kinds of wrong thinking but the church is the foundation of truth. We are holding the entire world to a conviction of truth. That's why we're building the church. If you love truth, build the church. Another reason we're building the church is because it will outlast us. It will outlive us. You know, and these days we can build church buildings in months and just a few short years. But in times past, they've taken centuries to build. Churches in France and one in Spain I was reading about recently took several centuries to build and generations would live and pass down the torch to the next generation to finish this wall and finish this building and finish this part. It took generations to build and I'm not talking about buildings just yet, but I am saying that the church, as you build the church, it will outlive you and outlast you. This is why we're building the church. Okay, so now let's, let's take a, a, a small shift and I wanna talk about our local church, Bethany. I love this local church. I love the people of this church, the values of this church. I love the history of this church. I am passionate about Bethany Church and I don't know if you feel the same way, but I love our local church. And we're an ex a beautiful expression of the global church. We, Bethany is an incredible church. And for, for some of you, this is gonna sound like, I've heard this history so many times, but for, for others that are new and maybe haven't heard this, I'm gonna go through a couple of parts of our history and just talk about the leadership and, and, and what I love about this church. I wanna start with our Baker campus. And I love Baker campus. Wave at me if you've been, ever been to Baker campus before. Uh, even people in New Orleans, everybody, you can wave. Baker Campus is where it all started in 1963. I spent a lot of time in Baker Campus, led so much worship there, was a part of that incredible uh, congregation for so many years. Today it is being led by Pastors Anthony and Karonda Brown. And I'm gonna put their picture up. I want them to stand up at our Baker Campus and everybody, let's just honor them, show them some love. I wanna brag on their leadership. They are doing so tremendous. Both Anthony and Karanda, they're foster parents. They have a passion for outreach and they're doing some, some incredible outreaches into the community in North Baton Rouge. 
Uh, also, Baker Campus is home to our mentorship program. It's the leading, leading the way, but we're opening different chapters in different parts of our church, but our leading chapter is in Baker, and I'm so proud of our Baker Campus. Uh, fast forward four decades. We, we were only one church, one location for four decades. And then in 2001, the campus that I'm broadcasting from right now was begun. And I'm so grateful for our South Baton Rouge location. It's incredible. Are you guys thankful for this place and what it's meant to your family, to your kids? To your grandkids, I mean, this is, it's, been, it's an amazing local church, and now Pastors Dustin and Kristen West are leading this campus, and I'm so proud of their leadership. I want them to stand. Let's tell them how much we love them. You guys are doing amazing. Dustin and Kristen, so, so well. Uh, proud of their leadership. Parts of the, some of what I love about this campus is it's home to Bethany Christian School. It's also where our main central staff is located. Uh, I love the community of this campus. There's so many great relationships in this campus. Fast forward to 2014. And uh, what's ironic is today marks the 10-year anniversary of our Livingston Parish campus. So Livingston Parish campus began in Walker High, High School Gymnasium. We had to purchase air-conditioned units for that gym. That's, I mean, look, that was a tough space. We were so grateful for the space, but it was tough. I mean, we had to install air conditions. We had to renovate bathrooms. We had to do all kinds of stuff. But that church began to flourish and grow to almost 1,000 people. And we were able to build a building off of Jubin Road uh, just a few years back, right when COVID started. We had only been in the building three weeks and COVID started. Welcome home, everyone. It's like, uh, but now pastors Matt and Audra Hadley are leading that campus. Show them some love, everyone. I want them to stand at Livingston campus. Matt and Audra are phenomenal pastors. I'm telling you, they are, they are some of the world's best. And I love to see what they're doing with B groups and how they're leading. And also, they're very passionate about the presence of God. Both Matt and Audra love prayer, love the presence of God, and I'm just I'm proud of them. Fast forward to 2017, uh, where something birthed in our hearts towards Terrebonne Parish down in Cajun country and Thibodeau and Homa, we were able to launch an HL Bourgeois High School, our Homa campus. Pastor Simon and Wanda Abair pioneered that campus, and then they transitioned the leadership to Ross and Dottie Abair. And I want Ross and Dottie to stand at our Homa campus now, and I want to give them give them some love. I'm so proud of you guys. You guys are amazing leaders. And we were able to purchase the the First Presbyterian Church right there in downtown Homa. Uh, last year, we purchased it, and now they have a full-time uh, sanctuary that is our own, and, and they are at two services now, packed out in the Homa, in, uh, Homa campus, and just proud of their efforts. They have a, 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 an outreach to the homeless that is amazing. They do men's and women-specific uh, ministries that are fantastic. Let's fast forward to 2021. In 2021, we know we were all going through COVID. COVID was a crazy time. And as a church, we had to make the decision, should we pull the reins back on renovating our Canal Street property or should we move forward? We decided to move ahead because we knew that at some point COVID was gonna be over and we wanted the mission to continue there. And so we finished building that building and in the fall, of 2021, we launched our New Orleans campus. And for the rest of the church that doesn't know, maybe hasn't visited, what God is doing on Canal Street is extraordinary. Extraordinary. Uh, I'm so proud of that campus. I'm so proud of its leadership. Just last week, we all know New Orleans is known for Mardi Gras, and the Endymion Parade is the largest pr parade in, uh, in Mardi Gras. Our church is on the route of the Endymion Parade. I'm talking about tens of thousands of people passing by, and our church sprung into action and has every year to do outreach and, mi and ministry to all of the people that are there, a phenomenal outreach. And Pastors Chris and Danielle Burns have been leading the church there. Uh, they come from a, a background of prayer, and so they have opened up multiple nights a week to pray. People are gathering there on Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights. They are praying uh, and uh, doing such a tremendous job. They just got burdened to open a chapter of our BTS, our Bible training school there in New Orleans. And in their first semester, they had 18 students sign up and they're a part of the BTS there in New Orleans. So let's go, New Orleans. 
So incredible. And then last year, God's time span was much quicker than what we had imagined. We had a vision to start a church in the Caribbean that would ultimately impact all of the islands. And we're talking 10, 20 year stuff that we want to see churches on different islands in the Caribbean. We called it the Project Caribbean. We were in an elders meeting and two families that were a part of that stepped forward and they said they want to move there to pioneer this work, the Wiggins family and the Torres family. And last year, if, if you weren't here, we prayed over them and we sent them out to start the work. We sent four missions trips. We did a crusade. Um, and the work there is going amazingly. I was with them last weekend while you guys were in church. I was there at our, our, our campus there. We are still meeting in homes. Uh, and last Sunday morning was held in the Wiggins home there in Puerto Rico and almost 50 people. And we're talking about people, we didn't know anybody, like zero. And the Lord has drawn some incredible families together to be the, the nucleus of this new church in Puerto Rico. And only God could cause all of this to happen. It's amazing. But uh, I wanna give an update on some of the property. You know, last year we, we, we found some property and we wanted to build a missions base. Um, it's not easy buying property in somewhere that's not within the 50 states because there's so many processes that have to go, on, uh, th go through. So it's been a year we've been trying to close on this property through environmental studies and all the things. But the good news is uh, everything is cleared and we're, we're within a 30-day closing window on this property. What's gonna take place on this property is we're gonna build a missions headquarters. We're gonna be able to send our teams, people from, uh, from Louisiana, to there. We're also gonna open a chapter of BTS in Puerto Rico. And this property will be the headquarters for that Bible training school and for all the missions trips that go there. And so uh, I wanna give you an update. Up until now, we've been able to raise $859,028 to go towards the purchasing of this land and towards the construction of this missions base. We're still a few hundred thousand dollars away from being able to finish the missions base, but I can see the, the end within grasp and it's gonna be amazing. And when you sign up to go on a missions trip, you'll be able to go and stay at our properties there in Puerto Rico. Yeah, that's so cool, man. That is, that is fun, that is cool. An item to be praying about with that particular project is as the church is growing, eventually we're gonna also need a place for the church to assemble and so be praying just for divine favor. Be praying that God opens up a door, a building, the right space for us to meet in, uh, because I know he's got a plan for that. You know, do you remember the part in the scriptures where Jesus said, go into the town and you'll find a man. Tell him the master has need of the room and he'll already have the room prepared. Look, when God needs a room, he's able to make it happen. And so just, just be in prayer that the Lord would cause there to be a sanctuary, a place where, because the Wiggins uh, home with 50 people in it is kind of comical. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So, uh, but God is gonna provide a, a space for us. Now, I wanna tell you something exciting that's happening that is 2024. Last year, I gave the vision for us to multiply and for our different campuses to multiply. And we are seeing the first fruits of that as our Baker campus is launching their associate pastor, Pastor Wyatt and Becca Shelton, to launch a campus in Ascension Parish, Gonzales, Prairieville, Dutchtown. And next weekend, we are beginning a brand new campus in Ascension Parish. Come on, everybody. Let's celebrate. And I have Pastor Wyatt and Becca up. And it was a sacrifice for them to be there here today because uh, they are setting up the sound systems and the video in trial run for our launch next week. But I said, I would love for you to come and for us to be able to see your faces and pray over you and just tell you we're behind you 100%. Wyatt, take 20 seconds and tell us what's in your heart for Ascension Parish. Man, there's so much in my heart for Ascension Parish. I believe that this uh, church that we're about to launch is gonna be defined by ministry to the next generation and to families. We've had such an open door at this school to even come in and they wanna partner with us to do events at Sugar Mill Primary School. We're looking at doing extravaganza there, possibly. And so there's this huge open door for us to minister to the families that are moving into that area and for it to be defined by that. And I'm, I'm excited about that. Wonderful. Guys, would you stretch out your hands towards this beautiful family. Uh, they're not getting a lot of sleep these days with the launching of a new church and welcoming their first child into the world, but y'all are doing a tremendous job. Lord, we just pray over this beautiful family. Lord, we thank you for Ascension Parish. Thank you for Gonzales and Dutchtown and Prairieville, Santa Mall. 
that entire region. Lord, there's so many people there that don't know you. There's so many people that are lost right now and they need direction. They need to find you. Lord, I pray that you would anoint Wyatt and Becca. Lord, anoint them as evangelists. Anoint them to reach out. I thank you, Lord, that they're skilled, they're passionate, and they're faithful. They're skilled, they're passionate, and they're faithful. Lord, we just pray over them today. We just we bless the Ascension Parish campus. And Lord, I thank you for what it's gonna do in the years to come. Lord, even today as we're celebrating 10 years in Livingston Parish and the lives that have been changed, Lord, let us look up in 10 years and just see an amazing work established in Ascension Parish. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys. So thankful. Y'all give it up for them one more time. Wow. So incredible. So let's, let's shift to what can we do practically with people. You know, Bethany has a lot of statements, and we have our mission statement, which is to bring all people into the life, the family, and the purpose of God. We have our vision statement, which is if we do our mission faithfully for 10 years, we're going to grow healthy churches that multiply globally. Grow healthy churches that multiply globally. And it's our heart to see multiplication globally. We believe in what God is doing here, and we want it to be multiplied. We don't just exist for one another. We exist to see the kingdom advanced, and we will do the best in our lifetime to see the kingdom advanced. But so what practically can we do? And here's some fundamental actions that you can do. And we believe in this is based off of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, that some are going to devote themselves to prayer. Prayer builds the local church. We start everything with prayer. Without God, we're nothing. This is not our thing. It's his thing. We must seek his face. We must cry out to him. Prayer is what brings the supernatural. Prayer is what brings the anointing. Prayer is what causes what we do to flourish and to work. So we pray. We pray individually. I want to encourage you to be individuals of prayer. Don't just pray before mealtime. Don't just pray at Sunday morning church. Pray at all times. Develop a lifestyle of prayer. Be a praying people, and that should be a goal for yourself. I want to be a praying person, but we're also a praying church. We assemble and we pray at every campus, every Wednesday night for one hour. We're praying corporately. I believe in the power of corporate prayer to move spiritual mountains, and so we pray. This is a value, and prayer builds the church. Throw yourself into prayer, and through the, next, uh, and through the upcoming months, uh, we're going to even escalate our prayer. We're going to push the throttle even harder. We're going to pray and seek God. Our country needs prayer. Our world needs prayer. And we are going to pray. Amen. The second fundamental action that we do is evangelize. I'm so glad the gospel came to us, but it's got to go to others. You know, if you do a calculation in our cities, for instance, New Orleans with 1.8 million people in the greater New Orleans area. Think of the gravity of how many people are lost and don't know Jesus. How many people in our cities of Baton Rouge and Livingston Parish, we're talking of hundreds of thousands of people who don't know Jesus, don't walk with Jesus. If we keep this gospel to ourselves, we're gonna be accountable. And you know, so just as every believer should pray, we should all open our mouths and share our testimony. We should share the gospel with people. We're an evangelizing church. And so ask the Lord to help you step out of shyness, to give you courage, to open your mouth and proclaim. But that's also why when we assemble, we give altar calls for people to give saved on a, re on a, on a weekly basis, salvation. Thank God we see thousands of decisions every year for Christ in our gatherings. And that's why we baptize because we, those people that are saved are baptized. So we're an evangelizing church. The third thing, fundamental action is community. Community, you're like, well, that's not, a, that's not a verb. It can be. If you invest yourself into community, this means that church is not just a service you attend, but it's a family you embrace. You, you, you say, hey, this is my crew. I care about this crew. And, and, and we're a, we, we care about one another. That builds the church. The fourth fundamental action is that of discipleship. We don't leave people as babes in Christ. We grow them in their knowledge of the word so they know what the Bible teaches and they grow up as leaders because 
God desires each one of us to step into our gifts and to fulfill our purpose. And so discipleship is big for us. That's why we have programs like BTS. You wonder what BTS is? It's a one-year Bible training intensive. And anybody's welcome to be a part of that. It's incredible. We're launching a new semester in the fall of this year. You should give a year of your life, especially if you're in high school and you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do uh, in college. Give a year of your life and, and allow the Lord to mold you and shape you and then go into your, your, your college career. But that's why we have Life Family Purpose Discipleship books. We're training people in discipleship. Finally, fifthly, mission. Uh, we do all of this so we can thrust people into the harvest field, into the mission field. This is through outreaches, this is through missions trips, and this is through leadership as people step into their purpose. These are the fundamental actions. And so if, if you don't hear anything else today, Know that you can commit to doing these, thing, these five things and you will build the church. Amen. Through prayer, through evangelizing, through discipleship, through community, through mission, you will build the church. Now we come to the fun part. This is a part that I'm so pumped and excited about because we're not just going to build uh, lives. We're actually going to build some structures. We're going to build some things for some incredible purposes. Today, we're announcing a brand new campaign called Build Your Church. This campaign is gonna last between three and five years, and it is gonna involve some incredible remodeling and some also designing of new spaces called Build Your Church. So I'm gonna give you the reasons why we're gonna do this project first for our kids. I have four kids, and I am so thankful for the way that the, my kids were brought up in B-Tots and B-Kids, and they were trained the Word of God. It's incredible. But it, we're, we're going to do some things that are going to make our kids' experience at Bethany go to the next level. So, uh, so we're going to build our church for our kids. The second reason why we're going to build our church is for the next generation. Uh, and it's not the same as our kids. I'm talking about the next generation of leaders, the next pastors. Did you know that Wyatt and Becca, the people we just prayed for, went through Bethany College, and that's why they're becoming pastors is because they are trained. We've just prayed over them. They met each other in Bethany College. I mean, they are homegrown, home fit. So, if, I mean, this, you don't have a better picture of why we are investing in leaders for tomorrow is because we're releasing pastors, we're releasing leaders. And so we wanna build uh, things for the next generation. We also wanna build our church for our fellowship and for our gatherings. We want spaces where we can come together, share coffee, be with one another. Uh, here at our South Baton Rouge campus, I don't know if you've experienced the tightness of our lobby spaces, but you watch, when you exit this service, you're gonna be crawling through there trying to get your kids standing in line like, oh my God, I need to build your church, you know, we, for, our, for our gathering. Also, we wanna build our church for our worship experiences. I love what the Lord is doing through our services, which are broadcast around the world. Uh, but w when we assemble, it's so important. And then the final reason why we're in, in launching this initiative today is for our stewardship. Some of the projects that we're gonna take on, it actually saves us money in the long run to build new and to build different than to continue paying current utilities on old buildings that can't serve us well. And if you've planned it out over 10 years, it's more economical and more uh, geared towards our stewardship for us to do these projects. With that said, uh, I'm gonna introduce what these projects are. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on, give me a drum roll on your legs. All right. Phase one of this project is gonna be a complete reimagining of our South Baton Rouge campus. Very excited about this. This first is gonna take place with our kids. We're going to spend a, a lot of money making our kids' space phenomenal. Uh, some of the original concepts and drawings include indoor playgrounds that are like super cool, uh, but also enlarged gathering spaces, updated gathering spaces for our kids. This also is going to include uh, a, a new place for Bethany Christian School. I love Bethany Christian School. It was founded, I believe, in the early 80s or late 70s by my grandmother. Uh, and now it is one of the finest private 
educations in the city of Baton Rouge. It just was ranked number two by one of the leading magazines. Uh, it's phenomenal. My kids are a part of the school. It's, it's tremendous. But since 2016, in the flood of 2016, uh, they have been displaced and been in FEMA trailers. And so the, the education is phenomenal, but it's time that we get them a space that's, that's worthy of the education that they are receiving. And so that's gonna be a part of this project. Also a brand new lobby space and gathering space for our South Baton Rouge campus that's expanded to where we're not shuffling through and trying to dodge each other. Uh, and then with whatever's left, we're going to do some updates on our sanctuary space to bring it up to the technology where we can serve the next few decades in doing that very well. So that is our South Baton Rouge campus, it's phase one. Phase two uh, moves to our Baker campus. And uh, I'm excited, I know they're cheering right now. I'm pumped about what we're about to do in Baker. You know, in 1983 and 84, a 6,000 seat auditorium was constructed, 6,000 seats. And if you were to estimate how much it took to build that building, you'd probably say 20 million, 30 million dollars, two and a half million dollars it took to construct our Baker campus. Insane, crazy. I cannot believe that that was pulled off. My dad and, and some of the team just did a tremendous job of pulling that together. But in its current form, the efficiencies of the utilities alone, as we've done the math, it is much better for us to update everything and to reimagine what Baker space could look like uh, just from an economic standpoint. And so phase two of this is gonna be a complete uh, reimagining of our Baker campus space and the mentorship uh, program that's going on there will have a phenomenal home to be a part of. And so in the upcoming months before 2025, you're gonna be hearing more and more details about exactly what that looks like, but I'm excited for it. And then the final stage of this is going to, going to be building a place for Bethany College and BTS, our Bible training school building places where uh, people can have practical hands-on ministry, as well as some classroom spaces for Bethany College, and that'll be the final phase of this. And so this process, process and project is gonna take us three to five years. Uh, and I'm believing over the next three to five years, we'll be able to raise $20 million in extra cash to be able to pay for this. And look, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you got this, you got this, I know you got this. And they don't have it individually, but collectively we are powerful. And what we can accomplish together is amazing. I have so much confidence in, uh, in you and your generosity, but I have more confidence in God's ability to provide you with the resources to do this. You say, I don't have any more room. Watch God stretch what you, what you have and add to so you can accomplish it. To the level that you'll pray and obey, God will stretch you and he's gonna provide all of this because he's a good God. And we'll look up in three to five years and we'll be on to our next projects because there's gonna be more and more and more. I'm just telling you, if you're a part of this church, we're not gonna stop. We're not gonna we'll take our foot off the gas. We're not relaxing. We're, in, we're gonna work until Jesus comes back and it'll be one project after another. And so I'm excited to announce to you guys the Build Your Church campaign starting today. But practically speaking, you say, well, okay, pastor, this is gonna be a lot of money how do I fit in? How can I, how can I contribute? The first thing, I want to encourage every one of you to be a tither. If we all were tithers, we probably we wouldn't even have to announce a campaign because we would take care of this quickly. So the very minimal thing you can do is obey the scriptures and be a tither. If you are a tither, that, that is going to be a huge part of this. So I would just encourage you, walk away from this uh, vision meeting today and say, you know what? I'm going to be a tither. And this is not something I tell people to do and don't do practice myself. I make it an act of worship. When I tithe, I, I kneel and I say, God, I'm bringing to you the first, the best. You are my God. And I give you the tithe. And, and I experience his blessing in ways you could not imagine, but become a tither. Second way that we're going to accomplish this is you be creative. And this is, this is humorous, but some of you have boats that you could sell that you haven't used in three years. It's got a tree growing through the, through the hull. It's sitting in your backyard. 
But I, there are thousands of dollars of assets that we have in our homes. You've got a moped in your garage. You've got your, kid, your grandkids tricycle that they haven't ridden. Get on Facebook Marketplace, sell some stuff. And I promise you, if you're creative, this thing can happen fast. This thing can happen fast. The final thing is 10 weeks from today is going to be called, today's Vision Sunday, 10 weeks from today is going to be called Faith Sunday. And I want you and your spouse and your family to pray for 10 weeks about what you're going to commit over the next three years. And we're gonna come together on Faith Sunday and we're gonna say, this is not an oath or pledge or sign here. It's just a, I believe God can do this through me and my family uh, in the next three years. And we're gonna come together and we're gonna see what God does on Faith Sunday. So those three practical ways are ways that we can increase the vision. I'm so excited, Bethany about the vision and the future of our church. I'm excited about Puerto Rico. I'm excited about what God is doing here in Baton Rouge and New Orleans. And I'm telling you, God has way more in mind for us than we could even fathom. Or even what I'm saying today, the next 10 years, the next 20 years are gonna be so rich for us as a church. So uh, I want us to pray over the vision that was just presented to us. I wanna welcome at every campus for every person to stand Amen. Hey, I just want to hear from you. Are you happy about the vision? Are you excited about where we're headed? Okay, 50%. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep convincing you over the next few weeks. No, I know you're excited. I know you're thrilled. Let's dedicate this to the Lord. Lord, we present this vision to you. Lord, from each campus that you've established and the new one that is coming next weekend and what you're doing in Puerto Rico. Lord, what you're doing through each one of our lives, our, our homes, our B groups. Lord, and we present this Build Your Church campaign and initiative to you. Lord, from this day forward, I pray that you miraculously and hilariously provide all that we need to see all of this vision come to pass. Lord, we believe you for it. We know that you're capable of doing exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine. You're a great God with endless resources.